Welcome to the Department of Living Matter Physics at the Max Planck Institute for Dynamics and Self-Organization in Göttingen. Here we aim to understand how a myriad of puzzle pieces comes together to eventually form something we can call life. To this end, we ask questions from a physics standpoint concerning these biological systems. For example, how do they self-organize and achieve a balanced homeostatic state based on a hierarchical flow of matter and information? Such activity is powered on the level of individual units and can take a variety of shapes and forms, from self-driven motion and other mechanical effects to chemical activity, reproduction and growth. In physics, such systems are known as active matter. We develop new theoretical concepts and computational models to analyze and understand the behavior of such living matter. This is fundamentally different from the non-living or passive matter, such as atoms, fluids and solid bodies, traditionally addressed in theoretical physics. Inside our cells, chemical reactions release energy at the scale of a single enzyme. That's about a million times smaller than a millimeter. Incredibly, this energy can be converted into mechanical motion and amplified to much larger scales, fueling all the processes that we associate with life. In my group, we developed theoretical and computer models to understand how this channeling of chemical activity happens. This could be in actual living cells or it could be in artificial systems. For me, and I think I speak for the whole department when I say this, it's not just about using physics to understand living systems. It's also about using living systems as an inspiration to create new physics and new concepts. I feel really lucky to be able to work towards this goal with many talented students who, like me, have come from all over the world to Göttingen to do this kind of research. In the 17th century, Galileo Galilei said, mathematics is a language in which God has written the universe. Not much has changed in the last four centuries. In my group and in the LMP department in general, we are constantly trying to describe the essential behavior of units that are interacting with one another in a complex manner using simple mathematical equations. A lot of the relatively unimportant details are missed, but the overall picture is reasonably correct. For example, a stirred mixture of mostly water and a little bit of oil eventually separates into droplets of oil suspended in water. We can describe this process by a rather simple equation. Often, we cannot solve the equations using pen and paper. Numerical simulations of the equations require supercomputers. Exciting patterns emerge when we try to describe living matter. Interactions are dramatically different. For example, unit A might like unit B, while the reverse is not true. This non-reciprocity, which is inherent in many interactions out of equilibrium, is enough to produce patterns that resemble living matter. The units we usually think about in my group are biological cells, that is, living matter that has the ability to grow and divide. This kind of activity is special because more material is continuously produced and occupies room, something that does not occur in systems physicists usually work with. Cells behave according to a sophisticated internal program that lets them exert forces on their environment and consume and produce chemicals while they grow. But they also adapt to the environment and can thereby influence each other. So a large group of them can suddenly do something new and unexpected together. A phenomenon we call collective behavior or emergence and that fascinates not only my group, but the entire department of living matter physics. It's quite thought provoking when you realize that all this magnificent life surrounding us has somehow learned to use such emergent dynamics to its advantage. Now, on the one hand, the tools of theoretical physics allow us to find the universal mechanisms underlying this behavior. On the other hand, together with our experimental collaborators, we discover many practical implications. For example, they may teach us how we can control the growth of bacterial colonies with antibiotics, or under what conditions tumors grow, or how cells self-organize into different tissue shapes and patterns. The manifestation of activity we encounter every day is self-produced motion. From the inside of our cells to the coordinated motion of large groups, 
motility is involved in crucial processes for life such as reproduction, foraging, or response to threats. With my collaborators, we are interested in various physical aspects of motility. For example, how it should be used to optimize the transport of microscopic particles, or how it can lead to novel and exotic phases of matter. Amazingly, many complex behaviors observed in the real world can be reproduced by models with a small number of building blocks. As theoretical physicists, we thus use these simple models to uncover general principles governing the dynamics of living systems. We can turn the question how things work in biology around and ask how they would need to work in order to perform a function in the theoretically optimal way. It turns out that the outcome is often very similar to what we actually find in nature. Biological processes can work with a high energetic efficiency or they can detect signals close to theoretical sensitivity limits. My group is looking for ways to use ideas and materials from biology to create minimal systems that mimic the complex functions of living organisms. We are working closely with experimentalists from our institute to design artificial systems consisting of natural proteins, but assembled together in new ways and performing novel functions. For example, a biological cilium contains hundreds of different proteins to produce the beating motion that sets the surrounding fluid into motion. We can use theory to propose systems that do similar functions with much simpler structures. The synergy between these complementary approaches enables us to improve our understanding of the self-organization of living matter. Our theoretical research is inspired by the strong tradition of theoretical physics and mathematics in Göttingen. Therefore, we believe that the Max Planck Institute for Dynamics and Self-Organization is ideally situated for unraveling the secrets of life.